really, really modern, and he said hello to you. What's up, Lauren? Oh. Oh. What's up? Oh, he does not. That's all he does. So, and now we are in the Franciscan monastery, and um, I told you about Maximilian, that's him, Maximilian, and it's a picture of a famous German artist, Albrecht Dürer, and this uh, man, Al uh, Maximilian, he um, was the emperor until 1519, and he said he wants to make himself a monument when he's dead, that nobody would forget him. So he decided he wanted 40 statues, over life-sized, out of bronze, gold paint, painted even, but it didn't work out the way he wanted it. And he started 17 years before he died to think about his tomb. I mean, how can somebody think 17 years before how he wants to be buried? That's crazy. And he was like, I, I think, crazy man, like Ludwig II, we saw at Neuschwanstein. Not as crazy, but still. And inside you see his tomb, but then they started to do it and when they finished it and when he died there were only 11 statues finished and then his grandson and greater grandson built on and on so the whole tomb took 80 years to get finished and you can imagine in 80 years the fashion changed it was before it was gothic style very strong statues then you have renaissance statues that are really light and beautiful and um yeah for me it's very interesting because i have never seen a church which is like a, a like a um, they, all the, the dead people surrounding him, his tomb, and they feel like they're alive, I, I feel. And they're all out of bronze and you see all the dresses, so you have to look at the details when you walk around. And I can tell you about all the guys, who it is, if you want, but then we would stand here very long, but I will tell you the most important things. And it's in the church, without a flesh, it's okay to make it. original 40 and he had a program he wanted of course his parents his grandparents and people that he thought would fit perfectly in his role of ancestors so there are some um, relatives that are not related at all but they would fit in so like superstars of the time he wanted to because he thought somehow I will be related and I'm sure I am they find some something and um, so in the middle that's his tomb and it's also nice to just look at all these marbles later on, but if you, I just explain the story and then we walk around. And all on this, on this um, marble, there are all the important things that happened in Maximilian's life. So they had lots of battles to fight. Maximilian was at the end of the medieval time to the beginning of the new time, the Renaissance time, because it was the time of discoveries and um, the time when Christopher Columbus went to America under the Spanish. Um, and then um, the grandchildren of um, Maximilian, they were um, the Spanish emperors. So his grandson, Charles V, was Charles I of Spain. And then Charles had, a, had a, um, an empire where the sun never set because of the new discoveries. So it was really big compared to now. And he's like the one, Maximilian, we, when we walk around, we see him from the other side, he's kneeling up there and around. It's the family. Like, for example, this statue, it's 2,000 kilos, and it's his father, Frederick III. And he's, um, which one? This um, one or that one? The second the one, second. for example. Okay. And he's like dressed like an emperor. And um, what I love about it, if you look, just the details are fantastic. And I haven't seen a church where, like, all the statues, and they try to 
um, that's why it took so long to finish them. They tried to make um, the statues as um, close to the original, um, like this is for example his father, and they tried to find pictures and they tried to make it as, um, like, yeah. And all the Habsburg had this nose and the chin is very particular. And when you, for example, look at this statue, the, the last one, it's Albrecht, another Habsburg relative, it looks totally different from style. And all the art historians say this is the most beautiful statue because, of course, the artist changed. And this is a statue, um, and the model was made by Albrecht Dürer, the German artist. So you can see it's a Renaissance statue, and it's like very elegant compared to this heavy statue. So um, the, the style changed. It's not like now when you have like short pants and long pants and white pants, but there also there's a total different style. And it's, um, we call them the Black Fellows. And when we walk around, it's today like a church. It's a church, active, it's active. an active church. They have service on Saturday night and on Sunday, and they have concerts in there. And they have a, an organ in the front. I, it's just a wooden box, and they open it. And the organ is from 1550, so it's 500 wow. years, and wow. it's original Renaissance. And they play concerts on it from worldwide artists because it's so special. And it's also like the details, like if you look at this um, iron work, how they made this, and all this is just very particular. I haven't yeah. seen a lot like this. What about the ones that are up there? These are, yeah, he originally wanted the 40 statues, but not only the 40 statues, he wanted 100 um, um, patron saints as well, like little statues, and he wanted busts out of um, marble from the Roman emperors. So he was really, really crazy. I would say. See, and these are his relatives, but not all are his relatives. For example, he has a crown like Jesus because he was one of them. Um, he was in the Crusades and he was the king of Jerusalem. That's Gottfried from Bouillon. Oh, that was my next question. So what about the women? Yes. And this is the, the I told you, Black Fellow Church, but there are also black women. For example, this is his first wife. And that's why the, the Austrian Empire got so big. So see, that's how she looked in reality. And she, and they say she was a very important woman at this time. And it was marriage that the parents arranged. And she came from Burgundy and would be Belgium now. But at this time, it was also France. And, and it was very important because they were so rich in culture and art. So he got a lot of his influence. And it was a love marriage, although they didn't understand each other at the beginning. She spoke um, French. He spoke German. Like but most marriages. The language of love, I guess. Oh. So it worked oh. out. And they were a very, very, it was a good, good story. Great point. But um, she, um, they like had two story. kids, but she fell from the horse and died. So oh. he had to find another woman. And um, then he, he was successful on the other side, like the one with the crown. And that's for, maybe for Georgiana, that's an Italian. Ooh, yeah. Ah, and Georgiana. He, 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 didn't, he didn't love her as much as the first one. He just married her for the money. Yeah. Mame. 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 And it's, um, it was a very um, important family. They had a lot of influence on arts. For example, Leonardo da Vinci was working for her uncle. And so it was a, a rich family, but not aristocratic since generations. But it doesn't ma didn't matter. He, she was so rich. So he married her. And he didn't even show up at the wedding. They put in Milan, they put a bed up on the main place. And it was a wedding, a proxy with um, another guy that he sent and they put the naked um, leg under the bed and the wedding was fulfilled and in Latin it's a uh, per procura so it was um, but it happened a few times because when they were too far away or there were wars or whatever they had something else to do they sent somebody over so the lady um, was occupied and mm -hmm. some day you could fulfill all your um, like what you had to do and marry her in person but Sometimes they married when they were kids um, with somebody else, so it's a bit weird. A proxy, you should remember it. Many did this. And um, she died without having children, and she was a very sad woman. That's what the book say, and she was not happy in his book. So she loved Milan. Maybe you can imagine. Maybe Georgiana would, wouldn't like to live in this book either. I don't know. It's very severe. was too cold. She's the one? She's, that's the, that's the, um, that's, that's her, that's the other one. So she's not as, Good looking as the first one I would say. Yes. yes.
This is one of the dukes of Tyrol, and many people love also like how they made this statue, for example, like with all this flow. And um, they put, um, they put uh, at night time they put a candle in. Now it's an electric candle, not they just do it on special occasions, but er, um, in former times they used to do it, so it might have been a good atmosphere in here. This is the sister of Maximilian, for yeah. example, and these are the Spanish because the children of Maximilian, um, he had a son called Philip, and the, the Philip had the name Philip the Beautiful, and Philip um, had to marry the Spanish Juana la Loca. So oh, she was Joanna so the was crazy the son one from the first. Yes, mm -hmm. from the first. From the he first only year. had children yeah. from the first, and this marriage um, made this empire so big because um, she had the name Juana la Loca because she, um, when Philip died very young, she was so sad, and they say that she carried the, um, his body around Spain for a very long time, and she opened it up all the time and said, "No, he's only sleeping. We can't bury him." And then other people say it, it's not true how the story is told. <coughs> They, she just wanted to bury him where he wanted to be buried in Granada and um, she wanted to fulfill his last wish and she got um, cleaned away like uh, get um, out of the way and they put her into a monastery in um, um, to see, um, in Spain <coughs> and, and um, um, she, the way was free to rule for her father Fernando and this is the one who sent Christopher Columbus to um, to find the route to India. She's so, the one. And She's her father. The, okay, her okay. father. So that's why the empire got so big and it was all like because she lived so long in this mo long in this monastery, <coughs> she survived her sisters and brothers and she um, got all this empire then. And the Habsburg got it because she was married to an Habsburg. And the son that um, Charles was the king of Spain, so that's why it got so big. Yeah, and this is the organ I was talking about, which is 500 years old. And they open it up and still play it on weekends. And um, yeah, this is like the Burgundy relatives, the father from Mary and the grandfather. And this is um, also, I like this statue a lot that in the corner, just because it looks so great. And she was um, the grandmother of Maximilian. And she's all like um, red colored because there is so much more copper in the statue. So because the artists, they had different recipes how to make it. And also how they made it, like if you look um, very close, you see the head is, they, they put the head extra, they, they cast it extra and they um, like afterwards they put it on. So some are made in one <coughs> statue, then it looks more elegant and some are made in parts. Yeah, and this is the daughter of Maximilian, for example. When she was two years old, she was married to the French king. So yeah, well, she was promised to, but they, when they grow up, they have to. Another archduke, Sigmund. And see, that's Maximilian kneeling up there, and around him, these are the four virtues, and this is how an emperor should be, like with um, power and things. And these are also interesting statues. This is um, King Arthur of England. And if you look at the statue, it's also an elegant one. It's because it's made by Albrecht Dürer again. So it's a different artist who made the statue. So it's quite different. And also the statue, the fourth one here, is very different. It's also, um, it looks um, very interesting. He's like this, and it's also from Albrecht Dürer. But in the middle, for example, this is a very heavy statue, and you can see this is this was the first statue they made, and they put it into many the pieces. They cast it in pieces and put it together, and it looks more like a robot than like a person. Mm -hmm. So it's um, you see how they changed um, like and how they improved their style. And these are like, just relatives. Yeah, and then we can show. Sure, this is Sigmund the rich in coins, Sigmund the Münzreiche. He was the Archduke before Maximilian, and they say he had 50 children, 50, and um, not from his wives, he had two wives, and he got um, broke then because he had to pay for all the kids, and then they said that Maximilian should be the next one ruling in Innsbruck because he was, but it was a very rich time when he lived because rich in coins, that's why, because they made the coins here in Tyrol, in Hall, in the next town, close to Innsbruck, for the whole empire. And um, he called it Thaler, and they say that word Thaler comes from, um, then later on, dollar. But I don't know. But maybe it's true. <laughs> this is um, Ferdinand from Portugal, and this is Ernst, um, the grandfather, very strong man. 
Um, so this is Rudolf, the first Habsburg, and um, he was like the, the one who started the family empire in Switzerland. That's where they came from. And maybe you wonder why it's um, just so um, glowing. It's because when you're, I don't know how to explain it in English very well. I was wondering why they consider that part of the world. Yes. Yeah, it's because they thought when you when you're pregnant and yeah. you want a boy, you can touch it and then you definitely get a boy. Yeah, and <laughs> I don't know. I didn't touch it, but I got a boy. <laughs> I was lucky. Yeah, so you wouldn't have been lucky even with a boy. Yes, but I have a girl too. So okay, so you've been lucky. I'm lucky with Yeah, so I don't know if you. I think it's a it's a great church. I hope you do. It was just very quick. Usually, I love to talk about every statue for half an hour. But I think I, we have we have a lot to do. What is it? It's, um, called, in German, it's called Hofkirche, and in English, it's called Imperial Church or Black Cello Church. See, and um, there is also like a, another tomb there but we don't see it. And this is, um, because I told you, this is empty, there's nobody buried, but this is um, really um, the tomb of our hero that you just saw the battle up at the, um, the um, Tirol Panorama, that's Andreas Hofax. And he's having the black flag because we lost Italy, or parts of Italy, to the Italians. <laughs> but we, well, we still like the Italians. Uh, and Italians. We won't get it back, I guess. <laughs> You're pretty smart. Like, maybe you just should just love the details. I hope you do. Or like here you see the face on the elbow at this one. Or here she has beautiful long hair. And just like when you go quickly, you don't see that all these beautiful... <laughs>